Okay, the last sharing in this session before the tea break is presented by Zhong Yuan, who is uh, from the Hong Kong Computer Society. Hello, John. Hey, hello, Eric. Yeah, how's your days? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's your mm. time to show us um, the modernization of the monolithic application with the API architecture. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. So can you see my screen, right? Mm. Yes, I can see. Okay. It. All right. Okay. Yeah, you can you can hide oh, the cool. sharing bar at the, at the bottom. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, um, yeah. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining this session. So my name is John John Yuan. So today topic is about how to mon uh, modernize monolithic application with uh, API architectures. So um, I'm one of the uh, DASA SG committee at Hong Kong Computer Society. It's a group of uh, uh, enterprise architects. So this are a very brief introduction about myself. So today's session will cover four major areas. One is um, the first one is introduction about uh, the background, and then we'll walk, um, walk through some of the um, uh, key point between um, the monolithic application and microservices architectures. Try to give you a uh, know about the difference between them, and and the advantage of uh, using the uh, new model. So we call the microservices architectures. And the best practice of you uh, for adopting the microservices, we also cover this area too. Lastly, we'll uh, walk away show a uh, uh, real life cases. Okay. Here's the new norm. New normal. So companies are actually increasing global and they are producing their products to cover a global uh, market. So um, it's kind of a um, digital business. So a lot of uh, top management, they, they are being challenged by the board of directors to make the progress in these areas. So one of the uh, one of the key things about this area is about agility. So that is how uh, impacts the pace of digitalization. So a lot of companies, they're actually undergoing um, the digital transformation, but how to um, enable um, the capability and also keep a fast pace. This is one of the key challenge. So when we're talking about monolithics, one of the key things is about uh, the large enterprise. Actually, for large enterprise, it has many legacy uh, applications uh, running for over a long time ago. So how we, how, how we can transform this application to enable some of the new capability to these applications. So um, microservices come, comes to, um, um, actually, actually it's kind of a new model that we can leverage on. And it's um, actually promised to be a very good solution for the uh, for the transformations. So what is monolithic? So as a uh, there's actually many definitions available in the market. Uh, for example, like uh, the legacy application or some code base that evolved organically, and that the application does not have key domain or uh, module boundary. So this is the common way. But in general, we can summarize that this kind of application grows over time become difficult to understand and also it's very difficult to manage them uh, because of the high, highly uh, coupling design. What about mon uh, microservices? So microservices are kind of a new uh, software development model or patterns. So actually the software is composed of many, many independent services and all of these services would, uh, can be scaled uh, independently and they will communicate uh, each other uh, over a well-defined API. Okay, so here's the summary uh, between the monolithic one and also the microservice one. So for the monolithic one, the application builds as a one unit. So when we scale any part of the application, it means that we need to scale the whole applications. This is the real challenge. So, and another thing is like um, the application, when we need to change some of the program, some of the code in the application, their code base become very complex and making um, that's uh, induce a, um, a, a big problems when uh, when we're going to uh, yeah to make some changes and the team has some uh, has limited of uh, autonomy because uh, actually uh, it's very hard for, um, for us to combine all the coding and then and then deploy it okay this is a typical way and on the right hand side we have the microservices it means the application is breaking down into many individual components and each components uh, can scale independently 
So uh, when we make some changes to one component, it won't affect another one. So this is the beauty of uh, microservices. So change becomes uh, simpler because uh, they actually confines to individual uh, components. Teams can have more autonomy to make changes um, in parallel, okay? So let me give you an example uh, for this monolithic architectures. So this one is a very typical um, a traditional uh, uh, application like this one. We have our, our e-commerce site here with many, many different modules, okay? And one single database as, as the main database connecting to it. So when we do one changes, we need to uh, test it completely uh, within this application and then deploy to the production environment. And this also uh, uh, applied to the uh, uh, database changes effects. So when, when we see uh, the microservice architecture, we break the application uh, into different microservices like this one. So for each microservices, basically composed of uh, three major uh, areas. One is the, the logic, the business logic, uh, like this one, uh, the middle one. And then we, of course, have the database uh, attached to the uh, business logic. And then we have the um, API gateway in the very front, uh, in, in front of the services. So all the communication will become uh, communicate through the um, API call. So we have the uh, store front UI as the uh, front, front, uh, front end interface, and then uh, connecting all different services through the API call. So each microservice has, has an independent lifecycle. So we, which means that uh, each one of them can be developed, deployed, and also scale independently. This is one of the key uh, key initial things. Okay, and and then we can have a different benefit of using that, uh, including the agility, uh, simple deployments because uh, people can actually uh, deploy uh, the individual component instead of affecting other other areas, and each component can scale independently. So it gives us a visible uh, scaling capabilities. And of course, this can also uh, lower the cost in terms of the resources and also the deployment time. So best practices for adopting microservices. We see so many good things of uh, yeah, using the microservices architectures. So how can I get started? Basically, for our architecture team, we need to consider several aspects. So for example, like. Uh, the possible candidates that can represent the microservices. So how to select which component would be suitable uh, to uh, for this kind of transformation. And then how to run the monolithic application in parallels when we, uh, while we are developing the microservices. So this is to lower the, the risk and also minimize the, um, the risk efforts. So, and then uh, another area is about how to tackle the database. So um, monolith monolithic application also come come up with the monolithic database. So we need to take care of the application and also the database well. And lastly, it's about how to tackle the reporting because we break down uh, the whole application into different smaller microservices, okay? So how, how we can do some reporting across the, um, the distributed microservices environments. We need to cover all of this. So summarize as the four key aspects. So the first one is about the service decomposition. And secondly, it's about the how to tackle in a monolithic database. And thirdly, it's about how to re, uh, do the reporting across the distributors' microservices. So um, for the first one, there are some um, guidelines we can, uh, uh, I, I would like to share with you to how to identify some of the services go first. Uh, first one, identify those components that slowly couples and um, then others. So we can use this as a starting point. And secondly, to identify components which for which uh, business units want to have some advanced features or capability, like using the AI machine learning or uh, some new technology or uh, discount things. And, and then the components should be of high values to the business unit, to the business user. So the team can see the benefits of uh, migrating uh, uh, discount things. And, uh, and they have the confidence to move on and then uh, and then um, to continue the journeys. Okay, and lastly, it's component that we should have a key separation from the database. So I will, I will show you an example uh, in the case study that uh, um, how we tackle all this um, our criteria. So for this one, um, we, we take the previous uh, diagram as an example. 
This one is a monolithic application. And then we uh, select one of the uh, components, which is the delivery services, and, and develop it as in, into a microservices. So there's some sequence we need to have in mind. So develop the old component from the modern FX as a microservices. So we separate the delivery service out of the modern FX applications. And then uh, we're running both application or both component at the same time. So they coexist with load balancing. And then the microservices will finally or take over the old all the components uh, in the monolithic applications. So this is a practical way and, and how to tackle uh, monolithic database. Okay. So this one um actually we have three steps. So the first step is to analyze the monolithic database mappings. So with some tools like the schema cooter and the uh, schema spy and the uh, uh, builder. And then uh, this kind of mapping helps understand the coupling between the data objects and how we can find the potential microservices boundary in terms of the data entities, okay? And then uh, we also need to tackle some of the uh, technical issues like the data replication, synchronization, and also integrity, something like that. I will give you some of the uh, scenarios example to illustrate this kind of concept. So um, for this one, you see very typical one, we have the uh, ordered module and also the uh, order modules uh, in the database layer. And each layer in, and each module is attaching to a uh, certain table. So for example, like this one, our product module is attached to the uh, product uh, table and um, an order module attached to the order. But for some time, the model, order module will also um, use some join, join table to uh, connect the order tables to grab some data. So this one is very simple idea. So, but it's actually a kind of an anti -pat uh, patterns in microservices architecture because uh, in microservices architectures, the component table and also the order module becomes separate um, um, microservices. So this one should be, the border module should be a, a single microservices and also the uh, order modules should be the another one microservices. So basically we have two kinds of option we can uh, select. So the first one is about um, data as an API. So we use uh, the data, we have our API calls from the uh, order modules and then uh, call from the portal module. We grab the data from the uh, from this microservices one and then go back to the order modules. So this one is very simple. The second option is projection of data. So we replicate the data, um, synchronize the table from the uh, microservices one to microservices two. So we can use the uh, database join call uh, at uh, microservices two for the order modules. Okay, the third area is about the reporting across the distributed microservices. So this one is actually very important aspects of all applications. So for monolithic, uh, monolithic application, there are basically uh, two major approach. Uh, approach one, using the in-app reportings. So we um, yeah, do uh, use their own database for reporting purpose. And the second approach is uh, centralized reportings. That is the data warehousing. So we use uh, a kind of tools like um, ET ELT or ETL tools, and then extract it, um, the data uh, from different kind of, uh, from the different kind of uh, data source, and then aggregate all the data to a centralized data warehouse. So of course we need some uh, yeah, reporting tools to do um, to create and also publish reports. So this one is very uh, typical. We all get familiar with this kind of reportings. But for the distributed uh, um, microservices architectures, how we can handle it, uh, this kind of reporting requirements, uh, basically we have three uh, different options. So for the first one, option one, we aggregate with the service calls. So this one is very similar to the application layer but uh, this one is for the data day. So all the microservices, we build a new microservices called the reporting microservices. It will trigger some of the API call and then send it out to different microservices for grabbing the data into the reporting microservices. But the drawback of the, using this kind of option is about the performance issue because um, microservices has some additional workload or some additional design 
uh, to build and, all, and also explore the APIs that can respond with high data, large data sets. So that's trigger uh, some of the uh, yeah, performance issue when the data set is, is large. The second option is called data pump. So it, it is very similar to uh, ETL. So a kind of a data integration. So we, we pull out the data from uh, different uh, microservices from the user payment order and stripping and consolidate all this kind of uh, data into the reporting microservices. So we uh, one of the advantage of using this model is that we can build some logic uh, at the data pump layer. So that can actually, uh, we can transform some of the data or uh, doing some um, data keying, something like that before pumping those data into the reporting microservices. So, but the, there are some drawbacks. The drawback of using this kind of uh, uh, model is that actually we need to manage um, more components. You see, um, yeah, actually we build one single data pump for one single uh, microservices. The last option is called event carrier station. This model is very suitable for microservice application that's follow uh, event driven architectures. So when there's some changes um, at an individual microservices database, and that would trigger, um, yeah, the trigger that they, they, uh, this microservices send out um, send out the event, um, and then to the and then to the event bus. So it's kind of hub sub model. So the producer will produce the data and then uh, consolidate at the uh, event bus, and then uh, the reporting services. Uh, or microservices, this one as a subscriber to grab the data from the uh, event bus. So um, one of the advantage of using this model is that this model can act actually put, um, yeah, provide us a nearly real-time uh, reporting capabilities and and have a, um, yeah, and have a scalability and also, um, um, the, um, yeah, and also the integration capability, all these kind of things, okay. Um, the last session is about a case study. So I would like to apply some of the uh, knowledge we just learned and, and then to these cases. Okay, here's the background. So this one is a global uh, brand, uh, retail enterprise, a uh, very huge one with uh, many, many retail stores uh, across different regions. And they have a, they are undergoing uh, a digital transformation. They would like to uh, leverage the mobile technology, application technology to interact with their customer and then to streamline this uh, a transaction, like the uh, order and pay, and also delivery. Okay, so they actually deployed their application on cloud already to enjoy the higher availability and also the scalability capability for several years. But the architecture is has not been optimized, and it's actually not so good enough to support the future development uh, a purpose. So, and they, they would like to have some uh, advanced technology like the AI machine learning in order to improve some of the uh, current features like um, uh, that requires a high computing requirements. Okay. So we summarized um, the case into a uh, few points. So the vision is like, um, actually we, had, we would like to transform uh, from the monolithic architecture to microservices architecture in a progressive way. That's that means we take them, uh, the minimal risk in order to do that. And then to explain the difference between the two architecture to the management and the, uh, and the reason why we are going to do that. So we need to highlight some of the benefits and then improve the current architecture um, and use of, and also propose uh, the target architectures. And lastly, of course, we'd like to introduce some of the new technology like the cloud-based uh, machine learning services. So here's the technology roadmaps that we have. We have released uh, several versions uh, from version one to version three um, using different kind of uh, approach. So for the first one, we are using the differential model, moving uh, the application from the on-premises one to the cloud platform, public cloud. So this kind of rehousing approach. The second second approach is using the re-platform. So we try to like we we try to use leverage more managed service, uh, more past service, and the last one is. Using uh, we are we are architecting the uh, um the model the architectures, so we leverage uh, more a uh, past uh, technology like the serverless technology. Okay, so this one is the modernization patterns that we just mentioned with uh we work for free approach, we hosting, we perform and also we architect. Let's see how we manage it. Okay, for the first one, version one point zero is kind of our defensive models. 
So we uh, it's a restart the migration uh, from the on-premises to the cloud. Okay, so we start the cloud journey at this stage uh, to enjoy the on-premises resources and also the scalabilities. So this one, this application is a very typical one. Uh, yeah, a uh, two-tier uh, applications. So we have the web and uh, application tier hosting the application at this layer. And then the database tier uh, using the SQL Server and also Mongo database. Okay, no SQL database. So for the second stage, we introduced the auto scaling mechanism and also the caching uh, services in order to improve the current architecture and also have a better performance. So take this one as an example. We introduced auto scaling mechanism. You really encountered more people using uh, the application, the mobile app, and then more traffic coming in. Uh, to the low balancer, and then we trigger the mechanism to scale out uh, to have more uh, instant running at the same time. And then uh, when the traffic becomes normal, we minimize uh, yeah, the number of instant. So for the uh, database layer, we offload the database bottlenecks by using the caching, surf caching service like the uh, Radish custom. So this one is very typical, and using and we, we propose to use the uh, manage NoSQL database in order to keep uh, those transactions not. Okay. And then and then we start the 2.1 uh, journey, which is we, we're trying to build uh, the API platform. Okay. So uh, the application is actually in the uh, integrate with uh, integrating with many, many systems outside. Okay. So for example, like the pay, uh, payment gateway, uh, CLM and also POS. And in order to manage all these traffics and also have a standardization on the uh, API management, we introduced the API M platforms. So here, some of the uh, brand, uh, some of the very famous API M we we research for. So all these API um, call would be work for this platform and then uh, to the applications. So by this way, we actually manage our API in a centralized models. Um, in order to have some traffic management authentication and also access control uh, to improve this security level and also the surface level. So the version fee, we are going to re-architect the applications in a progressive way. So this diagram show you how we uh, plan for each stage. So we have the, so we have the first stage to identify uh, which component would be suitable for this kind of uh, re-architecting practices. So finally, we identify the waiting time calculation because it's loosely coupled than others. Okay, so this one achieved. Secondly, it's more advanced technology using the AI machine learning because uh, we need to introduce some of the uh, machine learning algorithm uh, to calculate uh, um, yeah, the waiting time, uh, the duration for, for, the, for the people. They just make the order and then they would like to know when they can uh, yeah, get the order. So we were calculating the delivery time, okay? And then the components should be of high value to the business units. So this one is one of the key features they would like to introduce for their mobile users. So of course, yes, this one achieved. And lastly, a key separation from the database, we're using the chat, uh, the historical data uh, trivial from the main uh, major database uh, for the calculation. So this one also achieved. So let's take this one as an example. So we have our, uh, we have the original modern Netflix application on the uh, left hand side. We separate uh, the calculation, waiting time calculation uh, with, into our serverless architectures. So um, the database, uh, this microservice has its own database. So we store the transaction log here and use this one to calculate uh, the, the time, the durations. And then we, we also leverage some of the cloud services, which is our uh, uh, you created with some uh, ready-made uh, uh, machine learning services. So we, we developed the machine learning models and then deploy the model to the cloud platforms. And that model can be integrated with the uh, waiting time calculation microservices, this one, and then return the result back to the uh, original micro, uh, modern FS applications. Okay, so uh, here's the closing, closing note. So actually, uh, in my real microservices architecture, uh, promise to solve the um, some of the soft coming of the modern Netflix application. Uh, it's actually a, a worldwide journey, but uh, it's not an easy one. So uh, yeah, sometimes will be a very difficult one. And that model can actually help enterprise to 
pick up the pace of uh, in, uh, digitalization or innovation and transform some of the legacy application uh, to uh, to be uh, uh, new ones, okay, to catch up um, yeah, with the current trend. And then uh, and this session actually we suggest several options for you to consider and also some rationale we have to trigger all this as well. Okay, so back to you, Eric. Yeah, thank, thanks, John. Uh, one question. Yeah, we all know that the microservice architecture has a lot of benefits to the company uh, and also the IT team. Once we want to change from the uh, monolithic uh, architecture to microservice architecture, I think there is a big change to the IT team, yes. right? Yes. Mm. Do, you have, do you have any suggestion to the teams how they can equip themselves to embrace oh. the microservice architecture? Okay. So, um, I think there's a uh, several approach. Okay. So my suggestion would be a uh, three major point. Uh, point number one, um, to understand uh, the microservices architectures. Um, so there's the, the technology and also how, um, how, how we can handle the application, um, how we can segment the application and also the database uh, using some of the approach I just mentioned in the uh, presentation. And then secondly, um, yeah, um, also we need to understand the CICD uh, pipeline. So this one is also important for the microservices development efforts. So it's kind of a um, yeah integrating uh, the the development team with capability of uh, using the infrastructures, cloud infrastructures. So that what would be one of the key, and and then uh, and also understand the business logics. So this one how we how we segment segment the microservices would, would be a kind of um, domain knowledge. We need to have some domain knowledge from the business side in order for us to design. The whole architectures. Okay, thanks for okay. your sharing about the microservice okay, and modernization. Yeah, thanks for your time, John. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Good.